Hi everybody. Hello, hello. hello. Good, good afternoon. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. Great. You cannot good imagine. Afternoon. Yeah. You cannot imagine what happens and uh, behind the scene. <laughs> Yesterday I am not you. using my headset, so therefore, uh, there's a bit of technical issue. So welcome to our YouTube channel, um, yeah. Voices of Courage and the Courage to Be You series. So today we are going to continue with what is your shape and understanding more about the personality type, uh, your love language, and understanding your shape. So thank you, Anita, for again, you know, stepping in always, you know, when either myself or Julia is down. <laughs> no problem. Here to help. As I was, I was just texting Kira just now, uh -huh. just saying that you know I just love this this crazy two ladies, you know, and anytime, anytime, yeah. anytime, anytime anywhere. Be, always be ready, always be yes. ready. Yeah, typical. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to waste any more time, precious time, because uh, Lisa and Helen have taken time to you know come on to share uh, with us about more about themselves, their personality. So let's welcome the two of them. Yay. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, hi Lisa. Hi, Helen. Hi. Hi, Lele. Hi, Anita. Lisa, okay. Lisa is yes. sharing the same oxygen space as us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because we are in a very, uh, we are outside, so the environment is not very conducive. So let's um, unmute ourselves when the rest is talking when one of us is talking and then we unmute okay so let's do with whatever we can right so helen and lisa maybe helen you want to go first to introduce yourself a quick introduction of yourself what do you do yeah okay okay yeah. yes hi i'm helen i'm the creative and creative director and founder of rosette designs and co It's a wedding planning and decoration company here in singapore i'm also a member of Woman of Courage Asia, community leader with Woman of Courage Asia. So yeah, that's something about me. I I originated from Indonesia. I have two kids in here and I marry Singaporean. So my children is Singaporean and I'm also Singaporean. So happy to have, uh, happy to be here with Lillian and Anita. <laughs> Fantastic. How long have you been a Singaporean? Singaporean, I'll I've been a Singaporean for two years, but I have lived here for 18 years. Wow, 18 years. Yeah, you are very, very localized already. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Uh, Lisa, your turn. You can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, so I am uh, Lisa. I am a mother of two boys, uh, four and seven. I am also... Uh, full-time uh, executive in the Foreign Bank Singapore. Uh, I also am the founder of Stella Maternity, uh, uh, Maternity uh, Apparel Label. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have very two very powerful ladies here because uh, if you know the Enneagram, it's a personality profiling tool. Yeah, they are fundamentally, they are nine types. Uh, you know, if at, at one level, but if we go to the different levels, you will discover there are more to it. Okay, it's a very powerful personality profiling too. And we have Lisa and Helen, both are the achievers, the type three. <laughs> and um, outwardly, you don't be deceived by, you know, they are the petite size, but they are, they are petite, but powerful, powerful, powerful uh, ladies, okay? can hear more about them uh, in a while. I just want to give a quick um, uh, help the, the audience to get a little bit uh, more, know more about them is what is the most evident thing about you that you know of yourself, your personality? One thing that's super, super evident is like so glaring. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so then you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. So something about me, I am... Uh, I'm confident person. I'm also very competitive, and I well one thing about me. I think I want to do it my way. <laughs> Sorry, if I have something that I want, I make sure that I'll go there. Uh, basically, I'm also very uh, visionary. I'm a, I'm a big dreamer and big picture person. So, uh, 
not very detail oriented sometimes yeah that's that's something about me i think uh, as a young uh, as a young girl i always very driven and i sometimes um try to do it certain ways that maybe people don't like and sometimes people label me a bossy when when we are young right like bossy but now knowing my uh, type 3 anagram i know i'm that type that usually is boss a boss but i try not to be bossy now that i know that that is my weaknesses so i will try to work on my strength right so so that part of you that traits of you also depends on because we uh depends on the other traits the other nine types because we all have the nine types in us it's just that there is the core right and you know uh sometimes you will also exhibit the traits of the other types in us right so the 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 boss part could be your type eight that is very evidently you know the, so you want to take a look at the score right the score for your your eight yeah, so but knowing Helen um, for a couple of years now, for a few years now, one thing that to me, this is to me what I see is she's very, very efficient. <laughs> very efficient. <laughs> she do things, you know, very fast. Yeah. Mm. How about you, uh, Lisa? One thing that's super, super evident. Um, with, uh, so I, of course, I think uh, I have I share similar qualities with Helen. Uh, I think the temperament tends to be more spontaneous. I'm also, uh, uh, sorry, um, as in more uh, bossy. But I'm so in a way, it can come across as very impatient. I want to get things done quick, and I want and I'm always thinking about the next thing on the list to do. I'm always on the go 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 kind of thing. <laughs> so when I don't have things on my list, my husband will always tell me, "You're yeah, always looking for things to do," like. You cannot go into your nothing box. You must have a thing that you need to do. Ah, yeah. So and there's always a doing, doing. Yes. So I cannot stop and relax. So to me, to sit and relax is very difficult. <laughs> you should high five, uh, Lisa. <laughs> so that yeah. means I cannot invite both of you to a resort, to a beach resort, <laughs> just lay down there, have a drink, and do nothing. Can, but that means maybe for the first five days, I will be trying very hard to wind down. Then maybe by the time you're ready to go, I finally wind down, and then we need to go already. <laughs> So maybe it should have a tick. Uh, the things to do is relax. Things to do. You need to tell me this is do nothing. Do nothing. But I think the, the my mind was still doing. The to do list is to do nothing. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Anita? So I, well, uh, yes, Lisa. Uh, no, so I, I think because of that, I think the personality, I think we also tend to be more spontaneous. Like when people throw in things away, we'll be like, okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, I, I think we, we are very enthusiastic in that sense. Let's get and go. Yeah. Uh, Anita, I'm just... hearing this very <laughs> initial, initial um, sharing only. What is your okay. thought about the tree? I, 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 you I, are a two, right? Yeah, I'm a two wing tree. So, um, very, if there is a need to, then there is a need to. But you send me to a resort, I know how to relax. I probably will forget how to pack. <laughs> That's how relaxed I am. So um, definitely, you know, both Helen and Lisa, we've known them for a while. And, and definitely someone I admire because it's definitely an area of my life I want to build and, and grow in. So I, I've seen both Helen and Lisa at work when we have meetings. So yes, yeah. they are amazing. Okay. So yeah, Anita, maybe you want to uh, meet yourself for a while. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, coming back to this question, what is your shape? Now, the shape they were talking about here is not about physical shape. Yeah? So by now, I think you all have already known um, S for spiritual gift, H is what your heart is passionate about, A is your abilities, P is your personality, and then E is your experiences in life, right? So having a little bit more understanding uh, about and doing some reflection on your shape, can you share with us like what are some of the we want to focus on personality yeah? so what are some of the strengths and the blind spots that you notice about yourself you know you can use um, i know now both of you are more uh self-aware and have a higher self-mastery of your 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 blind spots and all that so can you do also like a little bit comparison of like before you are more self-aware what were some of your strengths and blind spots and then what change? 
Which one do you want to go first? <laughs> Helen? Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, like Lisa mentioned, being very efficient, very fast. Uh, I always want to do things fast and in certain way and the most efficient way. So uh, because I also deal with wedding planning. So imagine wedding decor on the spot, right? I think uh, we need to think on our feet. But sometimes I can come out very uh, jittery, very like a uh, kanchong spider. And it it frustrates other people. It makes everybody also tense. So I know that's um, my reaction, my personality when I want to when I want to do it things fast. Now I am slower, so I'll try to remove myself from the picture because when I remove myself from the picture, they still can do it actually. So, uh, so what I tend what I tend to observe now is I need to think twice whenever I want to say something. So not just say whatever it comes in my my head right so now that i think twice sometimes three times then i type first is it okay to say things so i think that's like a create a barrier for me uh, personality wise uh, that could be my strength because i can think on my feet very fast but how um, like it could be also my weaknesses because it come across very nervous like very can't you <laughs> like yeah so i think that's how i balance Right. So, but after, uh, but now you have more awareness, mm. so you are able to regulate that. Yeah. Better. Yes, I try to mm. regulate it. I be more conscious. Also, before I say something, I examine first in my brain. Okay, I'm gonna say this. How, how would the other person feel? So the empathy part is very very important. Mm. I think for type three, empathy does not come naturally. It has to be forced. Like okay, think empathy empathize with others so uh, i think that's having a one uh, one awareness and uh, checking point that's very important for me lah. yeah so is it due to because you want to get things done first you know like get 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 the job done first so you know you can put aside sometimes if you can detach the feelings from yourself yeah so because you yeah. are very task task oriented Yes. Yeah, feelings comes later, lah. You know. Yeah, <laughs> feelings come later, and sometimes feelings come like way in the night. Like if I mm -hmm. uh, do something, I will like do things first, but then then after night time, then thinking, eh, why is it like that? Then start to regret at night. <laughs> yeah, because you are still belong to the heart centered uh, triads, right? Yeah. So if you do feel, but it's just that you can put aside your feelings. You can detach from your feelings. Uh, because your focus is to getting the job done. Is mm. that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How about Lisa? <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> Actually, on that point, right, uh, I think by instinct, right, where there's a thing to do, right, naturally, our head take over, even though we are heart-driven, but because we are still heart-centered, that that emotional bit will come back and we, uh, will come back and haunt us in that sense. So when we have time to slow down, that's when it mm. suddenly hits us like, oh my God, you know, yeah. what have I done? It's like, I finally, my heart can catch up with my head already then, uh-oh, <laughs> too late. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of the time, our strength is often our weakness. So from what I can see, I mean, because we are very goal and task oriented, I know that I, we are very flexible, we are very adaptable. And a lot of the times when the situation occurs, right? Uh, I think we, even though there are people at hand, our first mind is tackle the situation, solve the situation first, then think about later. So our to somebody else, it might be let's think about what ha how the people are feeling, make sure they are okay, and then also include them in solving the situation. That's not our, my strength. For me, it's solve the situation first, get it done, everything else talk later. So you know, and. Because we are also very task-oriented, we tend to think two or three steps ahead. So it helps us, in a sense, to plan ahead and uh, for, uh, foresee any kind of potential issues or things like that. But when that happens, uh, we might be two or three steps ahead of people and I don't have the patience for people to catch up sometimes, you know, because we think so far ahead already and like, people are like, hey, you're not getting it. <laughs> but of course, now I learned to tune back. I learned to, as I think two, three steps ahead, I try to, hey, this is what I'm doing. I try to talk out what I'm say, thinking so that they understand as I have my thought process going on. Say, I'm thinking about this, I'm this, 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 this. Because, you know, it's in my head. 
but actually I think they know already but <laughs> it's not happening so you 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 think thinking out yes, loud I find that thinking out loud <laughs> yeah. help people to keep up with me better yeah so that's what I do lah because sometimes my husband think hey, you think I I'm the the worm in your stomach you already so far he think I know what's happening <laughs> so yeah so I, I I I try to tell him I try to make it a point to talk out more of my things that I'm processing in myself uh so mm -hmm. that he can be on the same track as me yeah yeah uh, so young, I, young. yeah I think that's a very good tip for all of us actually also to think out loud you know and then so that people can actually catch up with us especially if you are the faster paced type yeah you have a faster paced personality type and i think before we go on to the next question yeah say we have carol <laughs> carol say hi lolo ladies <laughs> yeah she's actually here <laughs> We are actually all like within 10 meters from each other, except, except, yeah, except yeah. Helen. But uh, I just have a good question about you thinking three steps ahead, both to you, uh, Helen and Lisa. How does it affect, I mean, you, you talk, how does it affect, say, your, your spouse when you're so driven, when you're so fast and you're three steps ahead of everyone? How does it affect your spouse? Actually, for uh, my husband, right, he's kind of, uh give up on me <laughs> it's, oh he's kind of like understanding okay he's like that one uh so he kind of um in, in a way relent release that power so he's he don't want to take control and the good thing is he's type nine so he will just go with the flow but i always like change this change that plan here then he's like hey but you didn't tell me and just go ahead lah. <laughs> hop along so <laughs> i think uh it's also helps that he's that kind of personality he don't mind but uh sometimes it frustrates him when i keep changing because uh like lisa mentioned we tends to be very fast if i see a slight things option better like a slight a better option i will just jump straight without actually telling people that hey actually maybe we want to move here so uh could be could be scary so i read a lot of books and how uh we should really communicate where we're going and why we are go why we're going there to other people because we just usually um tends to just follow us I'll, i know the way but not many people can accept that kind thankfully my husband he's very chill so i also help him to tell him like what is my schedule he just want to know my schedule then he can plan it himself i think that, that was for me Right, so it takes you, you. It takes the effort to actually get to know each other. How um, how each other's preferred way of coping things and handling things. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, we can come to a so called a middle ground. Yeah, because otherwise one will be going so fast, <laughs> and the other yeah. one is like trying to play catch up and can yeah. suppress all the frustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe sometimes look back at him and say, "Are you okay?" Can we go? Yeah, so that, that helps um, to it's maintain so the harmony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jasmine say hello, ladies. And then she also says that, yeah, and then that's why you marry him. Ah. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, my, my story has uh, another like divine appointment, but uh, usually I don't like guys like him because he's not. Um, driven enough i used to <laughs> like alpha male until i realized that like, alpha male may not be good for me but god has to step in and say hey no this is what good for you okay <laughs> yeah so. yeah i think it's taking the time to to support each other to bring out the strength in each uh, each other's personality right how about you lisa i have a different uh, i have a different type of husband from heaven <laughs> Uh, my husband is <clears throat> not the passive type for sure. He's a workaholic. So when it comes to work, he's also very driven. He will also want things to be done quick, direct, and fast. So in that, in a work, I think in a work context, me and him, we work well together, except that um, we are both very strong uh, in our opinion. So we will both want things to be done our way. 
Um, but he being the very gracious man that he is, he will always let me have my way. <laughs> That's why I marry him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think um, even even then, like uh, for our relationship, right? Um, I will see that he he will. Most of the time, I'm still the faster. I'll plan everything. The the family schedule, everything is I plan. So I'll plan, 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 and then he'll just follow. In that sense, so, uh, he will, he, um, but because I plan so much, I will also include him. Like I will ask him, "What's your, what is your agenda already?" I will plan everything around that, because I go at planning lah. So I plan everything, see lah. <laughs> so I know everybody's schedule. Then I plan everything. Then of course, if I plan two trips, like I'll be booking trips when we can use to go for holiday. I'll be booking trips up to one year ahead. <laughs> I'll be booking, uh, like now I already booked, uh, let's say for example, outings, two, three months ahead. I'll be like, okay, I'll chalk it down, chalk it down, chalk it down, you know, make sure you know that these are the dates that you cannot use and that's it. I mean, it helps to have a very agreeable husband uh, for people who are very um, strong like us. Yeah, they're agreeable, right. but he's not pushed over for sure. He, there will be days when he'll tell me, hey, <laughs> then I will, oh, then I, then I know already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jasmine says, uh, Lisa is also blessed, both have gracious helps. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think, um, both of you, right? I saw the one thing that's very evident here, you know, is this efficiency, fast pace, you know, about both of you, right? Yeah, and but in comparison to the past, uh, because the because, like we mentioned, now you're more self aware, so you will check with others. You know, make sure that they can catch up with you and you plan around them, you know, you check in with them. But compare yourself to the past. Was there a, a difference? Like, and then, because you're naturally very fast, right? What, what was the outcome of, you know, not checking with other people? Or were you already uh, always checking with others? Were you conscious about that? Hmm. I with, think with uh, the, in the past, comparing. Maybe for, uh, I can answer to that first. Uh, I think uh, when uh, we are the leader in the company, right, it uh, tends to burn people out, especially your staff. So I need to learn by, I, I need to get burned. Uh, as in, I need to learn the hard way because there's one position that uh, okay, always keep changing stuff. Like the turnover is very high because it has to work closely with me. So my expectation also very high. So sometimes um, in the past, uh, I try to be very strong. I try not. I try to. I still come out very strong sometimes when I stress. So I think then the past, uh, people try to be, try to catch up with me, but they are not happy. Uh, so I think they are unhappy with me um, on certain ways, but they did not dare to say it. So now I'm, because of the awareness, I try to slow down and keep checking, checking, are you okay? Uh, any problem? Before that, I will just go, 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 go. So I think the difference between the past, I, I just do my way and then maybe I burn people along the way. Now, with the current team, I make sure I... So, but first, select the right person, the right type of people. So I know what kind of people that will work with me, and I put the expectation high. I, sorry, I put the expectation upfront, and then I tell them this is how I am, and this is the tips for you to work with me. So I give them the the cheat sheet first, how to work with me, and then uh, I also try to select people who will, like type three. They also go get it, so they have the same uh, same wavelength but not good in terms of they have the same blind spot as me so i will also tell here tell them that okay this is your blind spot then try to uh, try to of, uh, be more um more concerned about this area so yeah mm. so i think one um one tip that uh, is very useful i'm hearing is active listening so i can see that you know you have grown in um to be more patient and to listen 
right yeah mm. so that that is that's a great tip for the same for those who are of the same personality type as you but are very very fast you know and not aware of their blind spots right mm. yeah how about you lisa uh i think for me I, what i've realized is uh like i mentioned earlier being very task driven but yet still very heart centered it's always a very big struggle like to balance between the two i need to get the work done but yet i'm very the people are actually still very important to me but yet by default my my psyche will just tell me that i need to solve the task first think about the people later so as much as i want to consider people's feelings it, it's not something that i can easily incorporate when i make a certain decision so and and very often if i had to choose between the two i would still choose to do the task first <laughs> so I I, the, I think the years goes by is um I try to tell myself whether do I need to validate my actions with the affirmation of other people and I think at the, as the year as I as I mature I've learned that if I go by the task based on a certain principle it is a right thing to do um then it is what it is I need to do the right thing yeah and then the people not that they're not important but i can only hope that because they know me they understand that there's by no means is a uh, how i say a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, me trying to say that they don't matter but they understand that this is just me i cannot help but to do it like that yeah so is so you're sharing um to let people know, I mean, even the audience out there, if you in, in, in your circle, you know, <laughs> the people around you, you know, you, <laughs> they are this personality type, they're so driven, go so fast paced, so task oriented, know that they are not cold blooded, lah, huh? they actually <laughs> do have feelings, yeah, but they have this special gift uh, that they are able to put aside the feeling for a while and then focus on getting the job done. But they, they still have feelings, yeah. And yeah. I think when people come and approach you to, you know, uh, after they get the job done, then you can talk about the feelings, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for example, uh, actually, I, I think uh, Anita was saying about her type 2 personality the other day. I was thinking, listen to me, I was like, Anita, not that I don't want to say thank you, but I got so many things on my head, sometimes I forget to say thank you. <laughs> so I'm so sorry, I love, love you, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Too late. I yeah. forgot already. Type to forget very fast. So, <laughs> so tomorrow so, I send you something that you love, love me. <laughs> but I yeah. tell you, then there will be so many things going on in my head, uh, If I forget, yeah. So yeah, you know that. That's what I mean, lah. You know, uh -huh. because sometimes when I appreciate the gesture, but I got like tons of things waiting for me, then I'll be like, okay, sorry later. <laughs> so I'll just zoom, continue first. Then yeah, when I have time but, to reflect, yeah. yeah but yeah. one of my growth is I don't longer I no longer expect that huge, you know, thank you with hundred emoticons and all that. Because as long as I see the blue tick, for me it's good enough that she read it. Okay, good enough, done. For Anita, <laughs> it's also because she has come a long way as well. Yes, so she yes. has grown in, you know, knowing that. Um, she helped because she wants to, not because she has to, to receive you know, validation and all that. So she has also grown a lot in her self-awareness and mm. self-mastery. Yeah. So uh, one last one about, because we have talked about like, you know, how you deal with people and, and the tip about letting other people know how you work, like what Helen shared, you know, upfront, let people know what are your expectations, how you work. Yeah, I think that was a good tip. And then, you know, you shared about thinking out loud so that people can catch up with you in a sense yeah and one last one uh about children because we are all mothers here right parenting let's include the last uh, topic um, how does your personality affect you uh support you or sabotage you in the area of your parenting there any one thing that's very evident that's always a pattern that's always surfacing in your family mm. I think mm, maybe for okay, uh, maybe let me go first. Uh, maybe for the children part, right? Being a go getter or being a task oriented, achievement oriented. Sometimes we try to put in like a perfect. Um, we have this expectation of our kids. I learned a long way that I need to forego the expectation because my daughter has a she is a premature baby. 
So I already put down that repetition, but sometimes it's come up like, like, why can't you do this? And the funny thing is, she's exactly like me. She's like carbon copy. So things that she is weak, also my weakness. But I grew up in Indonesia where academic is not so important, like math, not so important. So I grew up like very happy person. But in here, you're kind of judged by your academic. Then she always think like, probably I'm not good enough because the math very, like not so strong. So what I know now, I need her to focus, just to focus on task. So I can, I can see um, my weaknesses in her and also can help her overcome that weaknesses from young maybe on the my mental side or mindset side so i think having uh, kids their personality similar uh, could be beneficial for for them to to be to to know how to deal with it like not frustrated when you think that you cannot do it but because that's not your strength so i just tell her that that's not your strength your strength is you know, drawing creative she's very creative but uh, my son he is uh, like me, type 3 also. I think type 3 also go-getter. Sometimes I see like, whoa, uh, he is very task-oriented. He can just do things like automatic. Then he just show me, mommy, I've, i done this. See, i done this. i done this. And it, just the problem is the comparison, right? So the two siblings, I have two kids that's 18 months apart. So it's like a, a twin. So they're very similar in age. So there's a lot of com comparison. My daughter will feel jealous of him so i need to counter my daughter say it's okay that's his strength so i think uh knowing enneagram right can see our kids personality helps us actually uh help guide them to to be okay with themselves so if, if we i mean with this knowledge it helps you to also um teach them that you know it's not always focusing on achieving, achieving, achieving just to you know prove themselves, but rather why why that they are good at what they do. They are naturally achievers. But then what's more important is why are they doing what they do? Because they will be naturally good at it and they are good at different things, right? So don't have to always be competing, competing. Because the competitiveness of the tree is it can be quite strong that you know. So with a mom that is, you know, more with self a uh, higher level of awareness of the blind spots you are able to um, advise them and give and teach them you know in that in balancing out that area for, mm. for their growth i think that's wonderful that's wonderful how about lisa after knowing the anagram your personality type how does that play out in your family <laughs> uh, i haven't really been able to i i mean i know like my elder son is very very much like me in a lot of ways uh daddy also comments that <laughs> but i think um he's not i guess because uh they are still very young they have not had the front cortex developed enough to have the self-control um so while he's a very he's a achiever he's very driven and he's very competitive whenever he's with his friends or yeah but he is not driven personally like um how i say only if there's somebody else he will want to be better but if he's by himself you ask him, do you want to do this to be better? He struggles. He will, um, it's like he cannot be wrong, but yet he cannot, he doesn't want to push himself to do to do it, you know? So there's a lot of pride there and it's, it's something that I see in myself as well. So learning to break the pride in a kid is not easy because you, I don't want to break him to the point that he feels so upset and disappointed with himself. Um, but yet, sometimes you feel like, as I say, it's everything I, I want to say about him, I honestly, everything is pointing back at me. So I always ask myself, when I say him, can I achieve the same thing for myself? Am I able to ex expect the same thing for myself? But a lot of times, I like what Helen says, I think we have so high expectation, right? And because we, a lot of times we just say it, and then I, I, I immediately I regret. Because I was like, say, why are you not doing this? You know, why can't you do this? You know, but to be honest, it's like sometimes when I take a step back at the end of the day, I just ask him, he's only seven years old. How much do you want him to do? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So, like, piano is the same thing. I said, you want to go for piano class, but you don't want to put in the effort to do your piano practicing. But 
he will want when somebody else is here, he will want to show off. He will say, "Oh, I can do this, I can do that," but by himself, he will not do it. So yeah, then he's also a very scattered brain like me. Daddy always complain, you know, we are always moving from task A to Z, but you're not finish anything between A to Z. So you have done A, do do halfway, then you go do B, and then you realize C is very interesting. You go do C, and after that do D, and then you come back. Then Daddy be like, things are all over the room. So yeah, so it's very hard to tell him when I know that I struggle with it myself, and sometimes I still do it, and because. I think my husband don't say me, <laughs> cannot say <see> me. <laughs> then he's like, you know, yeah, because I like I will also like I'll be cooking halfway. I will do something else. I don't waste time. I thought I'll do something else. I'll do a lot of multitasking, you know. And then after that, I will find, hey, I haven't finished it. I'll go back and do my my chores again. But we will not be able to give the same kind of leeway to my son because we'll be like, hey, why is it such a mess? But because we don't know whether he knows that he must go back to eat eventually, you see. And usually they will whine lah. At the end of the day, they're tired already. They're like, I don't want to go back to task A anymore. So it's not like you can instill a discipline, uh, in a kid that young. And I mean, you can, but it takes time. You cannot expect it like, like adult. Yeah. So it's a lot of, uh, <laughs> take a deep breath too, <laughs> and then we'll come back and work on it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think it, it requires a lot of patience, like which you know, is um, very very limited in me and my husband because we are so driven. We cannot. We are also moving at a very fast pace. So when I see that he's not moving and you're catching up, we also get very picky. So that's where the the growth the growth is now, You know, yes. to to be to learn to be more patient. <laughs> yeah, I think also and, knowing. Yeah, that. otherwise, you know, the, the our children will grow up in a very this kind of environment. It's so fast paced. You know, everything is fast, fast, and then or you know, not focused. You know, I wonder what is your the score of your seven in you. Yeah, because you may want to check your seven the seven the, the traits of the seven in you that you know easily distracted with different different things or. Yeah, right. So, but the, the growth here is patient. I can hear like, you know, we all need that, <laughs> including myself. You know, we all need more patient. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, thanks for both of you for sharing quite a, quite a number of uh, great tips here for our audience. You know, I especially like the thinking out loud part. Yeah, because you are know, so fast, really, you know, for because we can't read your mind. <laughs> like I said, you can't read your mind. <laughs> As you think out loud, it helps people working with you to know what you are thinking and that oh wow you are already like so many steps ahead of us we are still you know thinking about step number one you're already like step 10 already <laughs> yeah okay so let's hear some of the comments uh we have carol again carol says i'm similar to you both when it comes to my kids too expecting them to know <laughs> yeah i think that is a uh quite common for most of us also right yeah you know we always assume or expect that they, they know yeah parenting is not easy yeah <laughs> i think all of us need a lot of patience so last but not least you know um can we just share what is your love language what is your love language and then we can wrap this up yeah who wants to go first your love language Okay, uh, I think I go first. <laughs> I want to go first. Uh, my love language is quality time. And also physical touch. So, um, I think uh, words of affirmation, uh, I think the last one is actually acts of service. So, uh, and also receiving gifts also quite low. But quality time, it's very important for me. Not quantity, sorry, not the amount of time I see you, but uh, the depth of it. So if I have spent a lot of time, um, if I spend a good quality time for you, it, it can last me like for a few years. That's what happened with my best friend that in Indonesia, right? I never, I don't really see them often, but whenever I, uh, I meet them again, it feels like we never, we never be apart. So quality time is for me. So it sounds also like, you know, because you don't want to waste time, right? Time is very precious to you, very efficient, right? You want to make the best use of time, right? Get the, get the job done, get the best out of it. Right? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the first thought that came to my mind. Uh. <laughs> How about uh, Lisa? What's your what's your love language? Uh, I would say words of affirmation, actually. Yeah, yeah. and in particularly if it's a, I think I I like I like them written down so I can reread and reread them again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess yeah. Words of affirmation is quite important because um, it gets tired. Uh, because we are so driven. Usually at the end of the day, we are spent. We are so 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 tired already. And the thing that keeps me going is knowing that you know. It makes a difference. So I need people to tell me that it makes a difference. If not, if I'm just doing it for nothing, then I don't see the point. You know. So that's why I think I'm still heart centered in the sense that it can. Uh, yes, I want to do the thing, but yet it cannot be done just for the sake of doing it. It needs to be done for a reason. So I need to know that it makes a difference. And yeah. So I lost. Say very easy. Uh, <laughs> the the heart centered the two three and four right they they all all need certain form of validation affirmation mm. yeah right Anita yeah. yeah what are what are your thoughts after hearing so much from the both of them uh it, it is definitely true uh because we're heart centered even though we are going and we are doing we, you know we we do so much you know but in the end when we have a quiet moment um that's when the heart comes and we need all the validation and we're very emotional mm -hmm. i feel sometimes um we can be very emotional even even being go get that we can be mean we can be very emotionally mean if it's such a thing okay right um because this is a very short time you know we actually overrun yeah but there's so much to share isn't it so much to share about personality yeah we are just like scratching the surface and we can't share a lot yeah but um i thank you so much for your time taking the time to come and share with us we want to do a shout out because uh the upcoming monthly empowerment meeting we actually have Lisa, right? Lisa is going to share her story of courage. Yeah. So if you have not been to our monthly empowerment meeting, yeah, please join us. Uh, you know, it's on the 29th of September. Alberna will be sharing um, on the expert, the expertise, and Lisa will be sharing her story of courage. So you can find out more about Lisa, right? Uh, this is uh, coming 29th of September. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh this one yes our first ever <laughs> for women by women boot camp right yeah we're all coming together as a community and bringing to you our first ever boot camp for women by women in november so um you know looking forward to your transformation why what is stopping you from you know uh, making your dreams come true what is what is stopping you what are the patterns that you're still stuck in what are the beliefs and what are the negative beliefs self-sabotaging sabotaging belief or even fear that you are being stuck in so we go into uh this transformation bootcamp right is going to help you to get you out from that state of fear into living a life of courage purpose and significance so it's, uh, there are quite a number of trainers, so you can actually find out more details, more information in this link below. So click on the link below for, for more information, right? And yeah, last but not least, thank you again, Anita, Helen, and Lisa for coming on in today's chat, our lunchtime chat. Right, we'll see you again uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. So see you again on Tuesday where Julia will be back. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, and we also yeah. have Grace. We have Grace yes. sharing on so type, four. type four. Okay, Grace is coming yeah. to share on type four. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.